Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. So we continue talking about fields and forces and potentials and um, uh, I will probably do a little bit of recap of whatever we were talking before about this and then I will prove a very important theorem. Now this lecture is part of the course called Physics Plus and it's presented on unizor.com. The site is totally free, there are no advertisements, so you can freely use it. And I do suggest to watch this lecture from the website, because the website contains not only the lecture itself, the video, but also a textual uh, part, which basically is like a textbook, piece of a textbook dedicated to exactly the same material I'm presenting uh, in a video. Uh, and also there are some exercises, um, tasks, problems to solve, exams, uh, which you can take as many times as you want, etc. Okay, now, um, there is a prerequisite course for this, which is Physics for Teens, which is on the same website, and Math for Teens. Again, Math is absolutely mandatory, and definitely Calculus and Vector Algebra you have to know before doing anything with Physics. Okay, so let's get back to business. First of all, um, we have defined a concept which is called a field. Well, the field contains basically a few different uh, items in, inside. Well, first of all, it's a piece of space, it's area uh, in our three-dimensional space. We're talking about three-dimensional Euclidean space with Cartesian coordinates. Then, at um, every point in this area we have a vector of force, um, we call it field intensity force. Um, and also I have suggested a very important quality that the field must have not only the force defined at every point, which is a vector, but also a scalar function called um, potential defined also at every point of this area. And what's important is that the vector of force is equal to minus um, nabla u, um, which means, uh, well, nabla means partial derivative, so basically the f has components fx, fy, and fz three components of the vector. All of them obviously are function of uh, points x, y, and z. And uh, uh, therefore the fx of x, y, and z is minus du of x, y, and z to dx. fy at x, y, z is mi minus du of x, y, z, dy, and same thing for z. So that's basically part of my definition of the field. Let me see. So the function, um, the, the vector of force, force intensity, and potential which is a scalar function at every point, have to have this type of dependency. Now, from this, I have derived a couple of interesting properties of the field. For example, if you have two points in the field, A and B, and certain trajectory where some object is moving, now, at every point there is some kind of a force, F, vector, which is acting on this object. So the force performs certain amount of work. And what I have derived in that lecture, that this work from A to B is independent on the path. So if I would take another path, or another path, the total amount of work will be the same to move an object from A. Uh, from uh, the, the, the force performs when object moves from A to B. And another quality was 
that if A and B are at the same point, which means we start and we finish at the same point, then the total amount of work along this closed path is equal to zero. This is all was actually part of the previous one of the previous lectures where I was talking about properties of the field. So basically, if we have this type of a property for the um, uh, in f uh, field intensity and potential, then these nice properties are actually true in this field for any two points A and B. So that's a characteristic of field. Now, today I'm going to prove basically a converse theorem. If the field has this nice property, then there is a function u, scalar function u, which basically plays the role of a, uh, of a potential, which is connected to my uh, field intensity force through these um, equations. Now, before that, again, let me just very quickly remind you, I have proven a couple of very important lemmas, like auxiliary theorems. For example, it was proven in the previous lecture that if you have, for example, um, that amount of work along any closed path is equal to zero, then the work between points A and B is independent on the path. Or vice versa, if it's independent on the path, then the um, amount of work on a closed path is equal to zero. And uh, I also uh, have proven that work amount from A to B is minus work amount from B to A, which is kind of very obvious thing. So if you're moving from here to here, it's some amount of work, but from here to, to there back along the same trajectory will be the same amount by magnitude, but with a minus sign. And also, if you have three points, if you have three points, let's say A, B, and C, A, B, and C, then um, if you will take amount of work from B to C, from B to C, it's equal to from A to C minus, oops, amount from A to C minus amount from A to B. It's like vectors. Vector from B to C is equal to vector of A to C minus A to B, right? So the amount of work uh, behaves exactly the same way. That all was that's all was proven in the previous lectures. The theorems uh, about the um, potential um, from potential um, we, we have this equality of the pa uh, work amount of the pass and uh, all these lemmas. It was all in the previous lecture. So today, again, based on all this, I will prove a, a converse theorem. So if the field has the property that amount of work between two points uh, is independent on the pass, then exists potential function u with these properties. So that's the theme of this today's lecture. And proof is actually very, very simple. So let me just start this thing. So let me wipe out this. You consider this to be as a known facts. I just made a little recap. Very brief recap. And by the way, you're free, obviously, to go to the previous lecture. And uh, if you just found this particular lecture and you didn't really listen to the previous ones, you're free to go to unizor.com to physics plus course. That's uh, the um, part which is called laws of Newton. And that's um, in, in that particular um, part of the website. So now I'm, I'm going to basically prove the existence of this function u potential. Now, to prove its existence, I'll just basically define it. For every point x, y, z, I will define that particular function. And that will be the proof, and I will actually demonstrate 
that defined this way, it um, results in uh, this uh, differential equations between the force and the potential. So what I'm doing is the following. First of all, I choose the, the point A with some coordinates. It's fixed point. It's totally my choice where I choose it. I might choose, for example, the zero point in Cartesian uh, coordinates. Zero, zero, zero. My choice. But basically, it's any point uh, w w which is good for this particular thing. And it's fixed. I'm not moving this point anywhere. Now, I would like to define function, uh, scalar function u, at some point with some coordinates. So this is a point B. Okay. How can I define this function u in uh, at this point? Very simply, I will have I will have any pass from A to B, and I will take amount of work from A to B along this path. So. If, as I was saying before, my field force, <coughs> field intensity force, such that the amount of work is independent on the path and depends only on the choice of two endpoints, then the definition of work is legitimate. So I just defined this work, which is independent on pass. It ba basically A is fixed, so basically you don't really have to talk about this. But B is any point with any coordinates x, y, z where the field is defined. So for any point, this work depends only on the point, basically on the end point, and that's why this particular definition is legitimate. Well, actually, I will do with a minus sign because we do you need this minus sign in the future? It's my definition, right? So the function is defined this way. Minus here. So negative of work from A to B, uh, where B is any uh, point in the field, is the definition of my function U, which is potential. Now, all I have to do right now is to prove that in this particular case the vector f is minus nabla u. So every component of x is a partial derivative by corresponding component. Okay, <coughs> let's do it this way. Let's choose another point C from A to B uh, on an infinitesimal distance in any direction. So I have a certain direction. I'll call it dr. That's a differential of displacement which is equal to dx, dy, dz. So it's a vector of infinitesimal increments along every coordinate. And along this vector, I will put the point C. So it's on infinitesimal distance, basically, from B. And uh, I can talk about movement of the object from B to C. Well, obviously, this particular um, amount of work, which will be um, the function of the force at point F, and direction, as we know, work, well, in this case, it's dif differential of work, is equal to F times dr, time, uh, th the force, scalar product, and displacement. Now, this is infinite, infinitesimal displacement, so that's why 
I can consider force to be like a constant, basically. If well, it's a function f of x, y, z. But if x, y, z is fixed, then basically uh, I, I just multiply the force in uh, at point x, y, z, x, y, z by uh, infinitesimal displacement vector, and that would be my um, amount of work which I have to really perform, where the function, where the force must perform when moving an object from point uh, B to point C. So this is work from B to C. Okay, great. Now, how does it look in coordinates? Well, basically it's this way. F has three coordinates, Fx, Fy, and Fz, right? So it would be first component uh, of x, y, z times d, x, by first component of this. This is scalar product, two vectors. This vector is Fx, Fy, Fz. This vector is dx, dy, dz. So I perform a uh, scalar uh, product. Plus, same thing, Fy of x, y, z times dy, and plus Fz of x, y, z times dz. So fx, fy, fz are three components of vector f, dx, dy, and z, and three components, and this is a scalar product. Okay. On another hand, now, as we know, the work which is performed um, uh, on the way from B to C, uh, if you remember, I specified this way. Remember, like vector algebra, A, B, C. So, why is this? It's, it's very simple, because the total amount of work should be equal to zero. So, W, so w A, B plus W, B, C plus W, C, A is equal to zero. Now, W, C, A is negative of A, C. And from this, I have this, obviously. BC is equal to AC minus AB, if you will transfer to the right. Okay, so this is a simple thing. So I can say that this is, is equal to <coughs> this amount of work from B to C. It's equal to amount of work from A to C minus amount of work from A to B. Now, what I have done is this. I have defined for any point B, B or C, or it doesn't really matter, the potential as minus work. So, if this is equality, then I can say that this is equal to WAC is minus U of point C, basically, right? A is fixed. This is a function of B in this case, or C in this case, which is x plus dx, y plus dy, z plus dz. This is the point C, coordinates of point C. Now minus AB would be plus u of x, y, z. Okay, great. So I have already this type of this type of equation. You see, this thing is equal to this thing. Now, how can I express this better? Well, if you know, well, let's let's call it uh, a function of one argument. Remember f of x plus dx minus f of x is equal, it's a differential function x, which is actually a derivative times increment of argument. That's the simple calculus thing. Now, in three-dimensional case, it's exactly the same thing. So difference between two values, this is minus, this is plus, would be minus 
du by dx dx minus du by dy times dy minus du times dz times dz. That's what du of x, y, z. This is the differential increment differential of function u at point uh, uh, x, y, z. But you see this is a minus plus, that's why I put minuses here. So if you wish I can put square brackets here and minus here. That's the same thing, right? So this is a pure differential. So the differential of function u minus, sorry, uh, differential of function u is basically um, expressed as partial derivatives and um, differentials of argument. Same thing as in the function of one argument. And by the way, in Mass for uh, Teens course, uh, I do have a reference in notes for this lecture. I have a reference to the chapter and lecture of uh, the course Mass for Teens where I explain this for function of many arguments. Okay, so we're almost done. Because we have this, which is the same as this, and it's equal to this. So let me just put this in a little bit better way. So let's put it this way. Equal to this way. Now, it's very close. Look, f dx, f y dy, f z dz, and this is partial derivative and also dx dy dz. Now, look at it this way. We can actually choose the direction. If this is b and this is c, and c is basically x plus dx, uh, y plus dy and z plus dz and b is x, y, z. Now, we can choose any direction. <coughs> I, I did not really specify exactly what direction I'm moving to. Basically, any in infinitesimal increments of dx, dy, and dz will work. Everything will be exactly the same. So, for example, if I will put uh, some increment dx not equal to zero but dy and dz would be equal to zero what would I have? I have only this component equal to dx to, to, to this component I will have this fx um, of xyz equals to minus du of xyz by dx right dx dx so this part should be equal to this part because this and this and this and this is equal to zero i said right and dx is an infinitesimal it's a variable so it can be any value that's why this must be equal which is one of the things which we wanted to prove now the same thing if i will put dy not equal to zero and dx and dz are equal to zero i will have the same thing for dy x y z equals minus du xyz by dy and dz the same thing so basically we have proven that there is some function u and i have defined it explicitly as work from point a which is fixed completely fixed chosen in the very beginning to any point b and by incrementing this point b to point c on infinitesimal increment I basically have this differential equation equation between the components of the force and partial derivatives of this function u which I have defined as minus work from a to b so basically the, the, the theorem is proven now what's kind of maybe uncomfortable I have chosen the, the, the point a the beginning of all these trajectories basically without kind of any particular um, considerations it can be any now if it can be any it means that i can i can define my potential function in many different ways and in any way i define i will still have these equations true 
that the potential function itself is not unique because its partial derivatives are unique but not the function itself. Same thing with functions of one argument. If you have uh, the derivative of a function, uh, you, you don't really have the function itself. You have a function plus constant, right? Because the derivative of a constant is, is equal to zero. So if you have a um, derivative of a function f, uh, for example, something, then the, um, the function f itself of x is defined um, uh, in such a way that you can add any constant and it will be the same thing. Same thing in potential. Potential is defined to degree of one particular constant to be added to this. It's only differentials, partial differentials, um, partial derivatives are um, properly defined because they are equal to the field intensity force. But the function u itself is not. So what physicists in many cases do, they just choose one particular uh, point for any particular field. They can choose one particular point which they just decide, okay, let's agree that the point A from which I start this particular trajectory would be this point. Now, in case of something like a gravitational or, or, or electrostatic field, which, which are usually have the central point, which is the source of the, of, of, of the force, the source of the fo field intensity force, they choose infinitely um, remote point um, where the force is basically zero uh, as the um, the beginning as, as the point A which I was using in this particular proof. And that's why the potential would be minus amount of work uh, the field performs when it brings some object from infinity to any particular point in the field. But this is just an agreement. What's, more, what, what's most importantly is that the potential function uh, uh, it is defined uh, only in, in such a way that its partial derivatives are equal to force, but the function itself, you can actually add any constant and that would be the same thing. So, that's it. So, my purpose was to um, compare the property of the field um, that uh, the work is not dependent on the trajectory, on the path, but only on the uh, end points, the work performed by the field when the object is moving. So this particular property of the field is equivalent to existence of some function, potential function u, and uh, so the force would be equal to um, uh, every component of the force would be corresponding partial derivative of the potential. So the force which has this type of a property that it's supposed to be like a partial derivative well, with a minus sign of a potential, these forces are, are, are called conservative. So gravitational force is conservative, electrostatic force is conservative. And that's why we are basically spending so much time um, talking about what is a potential, what is conservative force, etc. Because our fields which we are dealing with, they have this type of a property. Okay, that's it. Um, uh, what I suggest you to do is to read the notes for this lecture. They are quite detailed. It's like a textbook. And um, um, also, again, if you're missing some material which I'm referring to, by all means, you can go to the website and uh, refresh this from anything. So again, there are lectures, are uh, math for teens, there is a physics for teens, they have all the prerequisite information for this Physics Plus thing. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.